This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller well, all I gotta say sonny that was one bang up me oh uh, right oh thank you doc and Reggie you bet you if you keep uh, putting up meals like this why you're liable to have us on your hands for a long time to come <laughs> how about that mr. Marks yes the old Negro lady out in the kitchen knows how to cook I've eaten many of her meals through the years. You have, haven't you, Leslie? Ever since I was a little girl. For almost 20 years. You were in the confidence of Sonny's father all that time, Marks? Both as his attorney and his friend. Hmm. I see. Oh, by the way, what's become of Arthur? Here I am, over here. Oh, well, why pick a dark corner? Come on over and join the conversation. What's there to talk about? Oh, come on, Arthur. Be a good sport. Oh, all right. Things like this bore the pants off me. You're an ungracious scamp, Arthur. So what? I asked Sonny to invite you especially tonight, Arthur. Why? Because I wanted to make your acquaintance. Well, I didn't want to make your acquaintance. Then why did you come? Because Phil told me to. Arthur, I don't think you're being the least bit nice. So I ain't being nice. No, you're not. What's getting the matter with you? You didn't used to be this way. Well, I am now, see? Yes, I do see. I don't think Phil, lying over there in the hospital, knows how you're changing. Stop riding me, will you? Arthur, you remember I offered you a job in my office right after your brother was hurt. What about it? The job's still open if you want it. Nothing doing. Don't you work at all? Sometimes. Doing what? Whatever's handy. I saw you the other evening with a girl. Yeah? I wonder if you realize the character, the reputation of that girl in this town. Yeah, <laughs> sure I know. Then I'm surprised you were seen on the street with her. Oh, for crying out loud, am I any better than she is? I can assure you, you won't be for long if you continue in that kind of company. Say, will you folks lay off of me? Who do you think you are, anyway? But, Arthur, we all feel responsible for you. Now that you haven't Phil to help you. I don't want any help. Just let me alone. Hey, fella, you know what you sound to me like? Yeah? You sound to me like a young punk that needs a tar whaled out of. And I suppose you're the guy that can do it, huh? That's right, son. You ain't tough. You're just a kid that's trying to put on a front. Is that so? <gasps> I say. Doc, look out. He's got a gun. Arthur, what are you doing? So I ain't tough, huh? Well, well. A real he gun toter, huh? And I just as soon drill you as look at you. <laughs> Arthur. Don't anybody move. I'm a moving, son. I'm a moving right up on top of you. Careful, Doc. Careful nothing. Why, this little pasty faced poor flushing cat meets afraid to shoot. Look here. Can't even look me in the eye. Keep back. Keep back away from me. Looky at him. Him a-pointing a gun right at me and giving ground. Keep away. I warn you, keep away. Just a minute, I'm going to have him backed into a corner where he can't back up no further. Then what you think's going to happen to him? Look out, Doc. No. No. No, huh? What you mean, no? Now you know what I'm going to do? i shoot. i shoot. Well, go ahead and shoot. <laughs> Stand back. Keep out of the way. Get away from me. Pull a gun on me, will you? Yes. Here's a gun. Catch it, Reggie. Got it. Now, get to your feet. Up with you. Hadn't you better let him lie down? You gave him quite a jolt. What's a little joke to a tough guy? Come on, come on. What you wobbling for? Stand up. I'll get you for this. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get you for this. Okay, okay. Save the threats. Now sit down in that chair. Let that be a lesson to you. 
don't know what you mean. Well, then I'll tell you. Don't you never, never pull a gun on a man unless you aim to shoot him dead. I'll remember. Well, you better, son, because folks just don't mess around at shooting arms. Oh, Arthur, what made you do it? What made you? I don't know. You got me mad. But pulling a gun. Where'd you get that gun? I found it. Let me see it, Reggie. Mm, fine. It's an old thing. Wonder it didn't blow up in his hands. <laughs> That was a very brave thing you did, Mr. Long. Walking right up to the muzzle of a gun in the hands of an angry boy. Shucks, I knowed he wouldn't shoot. Tell by the way his eyes kept going from side to side. All he wanted to do was escape. Will everyone sit down, please? I, uh, I've got something to say. I want to get out of here. You stay right where you are till I've finished. Sonny, darling? Oh. Oh, yes? My dear, will you come here and sit by me? What's this? What do you mean? What impertinence leads you to call Sonny darling and your dear? It isn't impertinence if Sonny doesn't mind, is it? Sonny? And you don't mind, do you, sweetheart? No. No, of course not. Sonny, are you mad? But, Leslie, I'm in love. In, in love? Yes, that was one of the reasons for this party tonight, to announce our engagement. Hey, Sonny, you're going to marry this guy? Yes, I... But what about Phil? What about my brother Phil lying up there in the hospital? Sonny, you must be out of your head. Why, you haven't known this man more than 24 hours. That's not true. We've been seeing each other quietly for the past six months. But you can't do it. You can't do this to Phil. Your brother already knows, Arthur. He does? Yes. We were over at the hospital last night. What did he say? He said the Richard curse would do to me what it had done to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it will, too. What do you have to say to that, Marks? Yes. Yes, I think Arthur's right. You're challenging death when you announce your engagement to Sonny. Oh, no. Please. Oh, please, Arthur. We decided the Richard curse was a lot of nonsense, so don't let their talk upset you. You decided it was nonsense after all the men who have died? That's what I said. Nonsense. There's no curse. But there is something. Oh, there is something. Yes, we know that. We had a demonstration last night. What was that? Last night when I was taking Sonny over to the hospital. We were walking through the park when suddenly a bullet knocked my hat off. Someone shot at you. Are you surprised? No. No, I can't say that I am. I thought not. Uh, what happened? Well, Doc and Reggie searched the park. Tell them what you found, Reggie. The crime. We found the gun that fired the shot. Uh, where was it? We found it in the pocket of a man sitting on one of the benches in the park. You mean you caught the murderer? We don't know yet. He hasn't sobered up enough to talk sensibly. We've got him locked up in the basement downstairs until he comes to. Yes, but how do you know it's the gun? You couldn't tell the caliber by the size of the hole in your hat. That's true. But when we got the gun, the barrel was still warm. It smelled of burnt powder, and there was an empty shell in the chamber. You're going to turn this man over to the police. We'll talk to him first. He doesn't seem to me like a very good candidate. Yes, but the gun in his pocket just after it'd been fired. A man so drunk it takes him 12 to 14 hours to wake up would hardly be able to take a gun out of his pocket, let alone see where to fire it. Naturally. That's my point. It wasn't attempted murder. It was the Richard curse at work. That needs some explaining. Well, don't you see? The curse doesn't breed murder. It breeds accidental death. The drunken man accidentally fired the gun and you were accidentally in the path of the bullet. That's how the curse always works. You don't believe that, and you're stupid to try to make me think you do. Oh, but it's happened so often before. Sonny's father and mother killed in the plane accident. Phil injured in an auto accident. The, the, the young man killed by Robert. I know all about them, and I still maintain that shot was fired with deliberate attempt to kill last night. May I see the man you have locked in the basement? No. You can at least be civil. No one sees or talks with him until we've had a chance at him. Sonny... Surely you're not in love with this man. Oh, oh, but I am. And if you really are, then you should send him to the other end of the world. I don't know what you mean. Yes, you do. If you love him, then you can't want any harm to come to him. Oh, no, no. But you know harm will come to him if he stays close to you. Oh, oh. Marks, I think you've said enough. She knows it's true. <laughs> she knows it just as well as Arthur and I. Arthur. Where's Arthur? He slipped out of the room. Doc's trailing him. Why? Why did he go like that? Let him alone. Doc will see he gets home all right. Gets home all right? Yes. I don't understand what you mean. Why shouldn't he get home all right? Sonny, I'm afraid this gathering tonight's been loaded with more dynamite than you realize. You mean Arthur is in danger? Everyone, with the exception of yourself, is in danger. Everyone who sat down at your dinner table tonight. You... you mean me too? You mean I'm in danger? You know, that's a funny thing about you, Marks. 
You've probably been more closely associated with Sonny here than anyone else. Yes, that's true. Then why have you escaped the curse when so many others have been its victim? Leslie. Perhaps you're immune to cursing? Leslie, I never thought of that. Why have you escaped? I... I don't know. I've been expecting it to happen for a long time. You've been expecting to be struck down and you've continued the association. I'm a friend of the family. I'm Sonny's executor. I've got a job to do. You could have turned it over to the courts. I'm not exactly a coward. I see. But, Leslie, you mustn't. You mustn't take any more chances. That's a very strange thing for you to say, Sonny. What? Ask me to give up a job put in my hands by your dead father when you're willing to let Jack Packard here, the man you love, stay by your side. The phone. I'll take that. Jack, I've got it there. Hello? Oh, Doc. What's that? I see. I see. All right. All right, we'll be ready. Okay. Jack, Jack, what is it? Arthur's just been hit by an automobile. What's that? You see? There's no end to it. There's no end to it until I'm dead. transcribed adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you tomorrow at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York. Frank McCarthy speaking. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.